welcome to another episode of The Leading Groove. Today we are talking about the history of punk, more specifically the beginnings of punk. Now, I think it's easy to say, maybe too easy to say, that punk started in the early 70s and exploded with the Sex Pistols and the Ramones. I personally think we need to talk about bands like the Stooges, the Sonics, the MC5, the New York Dolls, as without them, I don't think there is the Ramones or the Sex Pistols. But then where does it stop? David Bowie, the Kingsman, James Brown, Bo Diddley. Uh, so to prevent that rabbit hole for now, which I think I'll probably get into at some point, but for now, I'm going to start off with 1976. The airwaves are dominated by Bette Midler and Elton John, but two very important things happen. One in the U.S. and one in England. First, April 23rd, 1976, the world is introduced to the Ramones' first release, 14 songs on the album with a total play time of just 29 minutes, giving you about two minutes a song. Uh, just a few months later, as the punk scene is emerging in England, uh, one, the 100 Club in London hosts the 100 Club Punk Festival with the Sex Pistols, the Clash, the Dam, the Vibrators, the Buzzcocks, and even Susie and the Banshees. Now, Susie's set was described as completely improvised with her reciting the Lord's Prayer over what could best be described as noise. The event was of particular importance because who was in attendance? You've got Paul Weller, later of the Jam, Shane McGowan of the Pogues, Colin Newman of Wire, Viv Albertine of the Slit, Chrissy Hind of the Pretenders, uh, Kevin Haskins and David Jay of Bauhaus and Love and Rockets. So, following year, 1977, brings us an yet another release by the Ramones. January 10th, Ramones release, Leave Home. Um, songs like Glad to See You Go, Shock Treatment, Pinhead, and so many more great songs are on that album. Uh, January 29th brings The Buzzcocks, Spiral Scratch, featuring Boredom uh, and just a few months later in September they do the John Peel show and play What Do I Get? Now Boredom and What Do I Get have got to be their two biggest songs. Uh, uh, as a sidebar uh, here we are in 2022 Buzzcocks just released yet another album last year uh, called Sonics and the Soul. Uh, they're Still still out there rocking. Uh, February 8th, television release Marquee Moon. Uh, some may or may not consider television punk, but it was uh, television sing Tom uh, Verlaine uh, who petitioned CBGB to do more live shows and thus accelerating the punk scene in New York City. February 18th, The Damned release Damn Damn Damn. Uh, so many great songs on this album as well, and easily one of my favorite, favorite early punk rock releases. Uh, uh, this year also gives us two albums by Iggy Pop, The Idiot and Lust for Life, uh, which I, mean, I think we should go back a couple more years and talk about The Stooges, but we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, April 8th, The Clash released her self-titled album, uh, songs like I'm So Bored with the USA, White Riot, London's, London's Burning, and of course, their cover of Junior Mervyn's Police and Thieves, which, as far as I know, is the first punk band to release anything ska-based, uh, opening the doors for more bands like Madness and the Specials, and probably even the Slits. Uh, May 20th brings us the jams in the city love this album because I mean you know we all know that 
rock and roll is based on the blues, punk rock's based on rock and roll. And if you listen to In the City, it is such a blues based album. It, it's great. I, I really love the album. Uh, June 1st, uh, The Vibrators released Pure Mania. Um, and I mean, I think they're a band I think sort of forgotten and probably criminally underrated. Uh, you know, Stiff Little Fingers, you know, another great band, uh, gets their name from the Vibrator song, Stiff Little Fingers. Uh, a little controversial here. Um, August uh, brings us All Screwed Up uh, by Screwdriver. Uh, you know, a uh, band I really rather not talk about, but I think I have to mention them because I think they kind of, you know, started the entire oi scene and, you know, the skinhead scene within the punk movement. So I think it's worth a mention. But again, I think we'd probably all be be better served just forgetting they exist. Uh, August 7th, uh, the Misfits release uh, Cough Cool and She. You know, September 7th, Talking Heads release her self-titled album. Songs like Don't Worry About the Government and Psycho Killer still so relevant today. Uh, listen closely. I, you know, I think if you listen to that first album, you know, and you listen to television and Richard Hell uh, and the Voidoids, you'll hear a lot of that same, you know, same tone that you hear in that first Talking Heads album. Uh, another release in September would be Devo. Uh, they released a single, Gut Feeling, with a uh, cover of the Rolling Stones, Satisfaction. And they also released another single, uh, Mongoloid, uh, with Jocko Homo on the flip side. Uh, what, what's most interesting and little known is uh, Devo had been playing around for years at this point re and, you know, re releasing art project films and film festivals. And one of those got the attention of David Bowie, um, who got Devo signed with Warner. So. Without Bowie, we don't have Devo. Uh, well, I mean, you probably argue that they probably still would have made it anyways. But uh, pretty cool. I have a very early release of uh, Devo's. Actually, it's not an early release. It's a later release of early recordings called Devo Live: The Mongoloid Years, and it's pretty cool. If you listen to to it, I, it's so terrible that it's good, in the sense that we get to hear them playing in bars with people booing them and I mean in punk rock fashion they just heckle the audience back um, it's fantastic worth a listen uh, just for historical context I, I love it uh, September 30th X-Ray Specs released a single Oh Bondage Up Yours um, probably one of the coolest female Front um, people ever, polystyrene, an absolute beast of a front person, um, and holy crap, a punk rock band with the sax. I mean, does it get any cooler? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, October 1st, a couple days later, the Dead Boys release Young and Snotty, and also Ultravox release Ha Ha Ha. Um, a week later, XTC release uh, 3D, which is a three-song EP. Now, two weeks after that, probably, you know, the shot heard around the world. October 27th, the Sex Pistols release Nevermind the Bullocks. Um, I think there's enough said about this album. I don't need to talk about it. Um... I mean, yeah, it certainly brought punk into the forefront. A couple days later, November 1st, Throbbing Gristle released the second annual report. Uh, very important release in the sense that pretty much every EDM band, Front 242, Nitzarab, Depeche Mode, all of them, you know, placed Throbbing Gristle as uh, one of their influences. Um, now, a couple days later, November 4th, Ramones released Rocket to Russia, their second studio album. Uh, November 
Uh, actually, I don't even have the date for this. I just know sometime in November, Wire release Pink Flag, their first album with tracks like Mannequin and 12 Times You. Uh, great, great, great album. Um, you know, very, very influential, uh, particularly on the post punk scene. Uh, December 28th, Suicide released her self titled album. Another synth punk band that to me is just as important as Throb and Gristle. Uh, they'd go on to inspire, you know, you know, every other synth pop band such as Soft Cell and, you know, likely the Fesh Mode as well. Uh, first song on that album is a song called Ghost Rider, which was later covered by the Rollins band and released on the Crow soundtrack. Uh, and that's all I have for 1977 I'm sure I'm missing something Feel if you've made it this far through and you feel that I missed your favorite release of 77 drop it in the comments and let's chat about it uh, thank you for your time I'll get 1978 out as soon as I can